Bella Bella. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back. It has been a crazy busy week. We have made amazing progress, unexpected progress on the Thai on the well, on the Tioga, yeah right. On the bounder. Three on three major jobs somehow just all come together. And I've saved a ton of money, and it wasn't with Geico. <laughs> I have to go back. I'll have to back up a minute uh, where I thought I was starting this video at. I have to finish up the tail end of the last video about the uh, how the exhaust got the exhaust uh, job finished up. The founder is quiet. It is so nice. How I fixed a major problem and a weird vibration that the uh, the founder has always had. It would, I was, get, I'll get to it, but I fixed it with a single bolt. This, the single bolt saved me an easy $500. I fixed that by accident. And I have another buddy that knows how to work on these. Uh, probably, probably saved me an easy another $500. And there are three major jobs. They're all but wrapped up. This is just such a relief on my part. Let me back up where I start. Yeah, I think I'm going to say welcome back twice in this video. So here we go, and then we'll come back here. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, making some good progress on the on the bounder. So I'll just do a quick update on this. I have this one side all together. I'm going to try not to get you know too technical and too involved in this video about this, but uh, we're making some really good progress in here. I have this side here all back together. The, man, the copper gasket, the price is some copper color in there. Uh, the bolts are all torqued. Spark plugs back in, spark plug wires on. Wasn't too bad. And this side here, I don't have it on yet, but those are cleaned up and I have the threads all cleaned out. Uh, it's important to have the bolts clean and the threads that they go into clean. Things have to, I gotta, I gotta show you this. Uh, believe it or not, nuts and bolts have a very specific amount to be tightened. But they're not, they're tight enough but not over tightened. So I got my torque wrench here. If the bolts and threads aren't clean, there's just no point in even using this. It won't give you a true reading, so. Uh, anyway. All right, I got, oh, the one's already on. This one's all been machined nice and flat again. Uh, these areas really don't matter in between. Uh, they just need to be flat, period, and, the, and a nice surface around each port. Uh, I wanted to show you this, I almost, did this on the Tioga. I almost used these paper gaskets. I can say they're metal on one side. And they're this weird cardboard type paper on the other. And I stopped. And uh, put metal gaskets on it. Here's what's left of the one that was on it. They're a little bit different shape. You know, it's a uh, Ford motor versus Chevy motor. And you can see the opposite side where that paper is. Let me flip this one back over see what happens to that paper it's all burned out I mean it's gone that's that's the back side of the metal okay and you know it's still it's just all cooked and still flaking off but yeah don't use it if you ever do this job or pay somebody to do it insist they use dun, 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 copper gaskets okay those are not gonna blow out Let's go, uh, and they're a real nice fit. So, that's it. That's all. The other side's all cleaned up. I'll put the, ga the gasket and the exhaust man, the nice flat exhaust manifold back on it. Uh, bolts. I'll torque them down to the proper setting. These are adjustable. You got numbers on them. You adjust it to what number, and the head automatically clicks when you get to the specified tightness. And the thing about metal gaskets is it allows heat transfer. You know, these act as an insulator. 
So uh, the, the exhaust manifold just got hotter and hotter with metal gasket. Heat can actually move through the metal gasket into the head and because the, uh, the cylinder head of the engine and because the engine is water cooled, um, the, you know, the coolant system carries, helps carry that heat away, but a lot of the heat can go through this gasket to the engine where it gets dissipated. Uh, these type act as an insulator, so um, these exhaust manifolds will actually run a little bit cooler with metal gaskets. So whether they're steel or copper, doesn't matter, metal gaskets on exhaust manifolds. Anyway, that's about it. Threads are clean. The bolts are clean. I'll torque them properly to their proper torque setting, the proper tightness. Uh, my torque wrench. So I'm about ready to put this other side together. And I'll hook up the Y pipe that connects it all together. Here's the other, here's the other part. The new donut gasket at the bottom. Yeah, these sealed to the engine. This is where it goes down to the exhaust pipe, or known as a Y pipe in this case. So that's a new gasket as well. Hope I get all that bolted up here before long and the muffler is laying on the ground. <laughs> Get the muffler and Y pipe all back up in. Uh, there's an oil pan laying under there. I changed the oil. Uh, let's see here. What else? <laughs> Somebody said, oh, I'm glad to see you decide to keep it. I never said that. <laughs> Just because I maintain it, if I go on to use it for a week, a month, six months, a year, um, I want it to be right. And if it comes time to resell it, you know, it's hard to get it. A fair asking price out of something that has a bunch of issues so you know that's why sometimes you see these things around they got this going on that's going on but they don't want much for it that's not this isn't one of those rigs it's everything works on it real nice the, the few things that do need done to it i'm gonna do to it it will be a ready to go uh, nice you know nice rv that i can get a fair price out of you know this isn't gonna be one of those Three, four, five thousand dollar. You know, um, I'll ask what it, um, NADA values it at, and I think it'll be worth it. Uh, you know, when you maintain your stuff, you get a better price out of it. So it'll be nicer to use while I still have it. Then I may hang on to it for a while yet, but it also helps the resale value. So. Why, why not keep up with it? What else wilds up here? At the garage. I'll grease all the front end components too, like the uh, grease fittings on the ball joints and uh, control arm bushings and tie rod ends, all, all these front uh, suspension system. All the moving parts, I'll grease all them. That's about all I can think of right now get old Betty up to speed here and ready to get back on the road pretty soon on the road to somewhere I don't know I haven't had time to think up far ahead I've been concentrating on getting this thing uh, <clears throat> getting the wheels back on it and getting it off the blocks and back down on all our feet again uh, first things first right Okay, so the exhaust manifolds, uh, got them back together. I started up, it was quiet. I left the thing, the engine warm up to uh, operating temperature, left it run a good 15 minutes. It got really warm. I left it cool down overnight and I retorqued, went over and retorqued them bolts one more time. And that's it. I've, we've driven around uh, a bit and it's so quiet. It's so nice. Okay, the bolt. While I was fixing those, I noticed on the driver's side of the engine, when I was putting that exhaust manifold on the driver's side, there was a bracket that came down from the body of the motorhome. And it came down to the side of the engine, and there was a hole there for a bolt to go in, but there was no bolt. It was just sitting there. I'm like, that's odd. I've never seen a bracket come down on an engine like that. I mean, the engine has its own engine mount, so it should be independent of everything else. Um, but, it, the, but, yeah, come down from the body of the motorhome. 
I'm like, I don't know, maybe Fleetwood put that bracket there for a reason. Uh, it used to have a bolt. <laughs> so I found a bolt in the garage and I put it in there, tightened it up. And it solved another major issue that uh, since I've got the bounder, it's always had this weird vibration at about 45 miles an hour. I thought maybe it needs a universal joint or a carrier bearing. This drive shaft in this thing is so long. It has five universal joints and two carrier bearings. I don't... And I don't really think it's any of those. I don't know what it is for sure. I'm thinking, do I literally want to tear all that out of there? And So I thought I'd take it down to a truck repair place that's not too far from here. Uh, they're more familiar with these, uh, you know, larger truck chassis. This is a P30 Chevrolet truck chassis These are this is built on. But maybe I'll take it down there and have them look at it and narrow it down. Uh, well, you know, an hourly, the hourly rate at a truck shop. Plus parts, they might have said, well, a couple things are not bad, but they're questionable. It might be coming from this or that and tried to sell me in on a big job and... And I would have left that it still would have been doing, it still would have been vibrating. <laughs> so it saved me from that. That vibration, it went away. I put that bolt in that bracket. It just doesn't do it anymore. <laughs> it's just a stupid dumb luck fix. I don't know, go figure. So now it's quiet and it goes down the road smooth. Yeah, you get up to about 45, the front end would start kind of vibrating a little bit. Um... Sometimes more than a little bit, it was annoying. And when I first got it, it actually did it worse. And um, we thought, well, maybe the front tires are, you know, the thing did sit for a long time. Uh, thought maybe the front tires got bad spots on them for sitting on a place for so long. So I put two new front tires on it, and that did improve it, you know, a good bit. But, you know, the vibration was still never completely went away. Uh, but it did now. It's It's crazy. It drives smooth, all the way. Yeah, then you get up past 45, about up to 50, and it would go away. And then at highway speeds, it just ran smooth. This could be um, it just that just around 45 mile an hour, give or take a little bit. That one speed, you know, it's gone. It drives nice and smooth. It's quiet. Must be like it must be kind of like what having a new one's like. The third thing I mentioned in a, a earlier video, last one or one before. The generator seems to have a mind of its own. Sometimes it'll stay running, sometimes it don't. A couple people uh, weighed in thinking it's probably the bad switch, but it wasn't. Uh, I suspected all along it might have a bad board. Uh, this is a control board that's down on the generator itself. It has its own start-stop switch down on the generator. Uh, the switches were, were fine. I was going to just take a gamble and just replace the board. Kind of rolling the dice, not knowing for sure that's what it was wrong. I suspected that's what was wrong, something on the board, because it has these little, you know, it has little, um, you know, resistors and relays and stuff on it. Um, I suspected something was wrong with this. And had I bought the board, I found the one at eBay actually. Uh, there's a supplier of uh, remanufactured parts and they were $149.99 for a new board. Had I bought it and replaced it, it would have fixed it. But my buddy Dave, uh, he come out. <laughs> Wait a minute, i got to show you this. Okay, my buddy Dave is, uh, he's, he's wise when it comes to electronics. I don't know where they're at now. Maybe it's in the other book. But there is, uh, you know, like some of these fancy diagrams, uh, only it's uh, the schematics. So he knows how to read exactly what's all going on on this board, what components do what, and be able to trace down, okay, for this to happen, you know, this, this, and this have to happen in order for that to happen before this will happen. You know, he can figure that kind of stuff out. So he was over for quite a while the other day, and... Uh, we're tracing, we did find a little rodent nest down in there, and a couple of wires that got chewed on, actually found one that was broken, and I snipped the end off, I blew it all out, got the nesting stuff all out of there, I put a new end on the wire, thinking that was it, plugged it in, it still didn't run. 
So he continued diagnosing. And here he found out there was a bad resistor on this board. That one end was corroded off a little bit. So he proved it out. He soldered a little wire and jumped that bad spot. And sure enough, the generator started every time. So he has, he's been in these electronic things for years. And I suspect he has a little stash that he has like his own radio shack going on somewhere in his basement or garage. <laughs> but he, he, uh, just sent me a text. He has a he has a resistor. He found it, found one, and he's gonna come over and solder that on the board, and we're gonna put it in, and it's gonna run. Like I say, he proved it out. He soldered a wire on there. That was the problem. When I first came up, I didn't know if my buddy was available or how busy he was. I'd first thought about taking it down to the uh, Cummins dealer. Uh, they service owning generators and have parts and stuff. So. You know, their hourly rate, that wouldn't have been cheap. You know, a couple of hours of messing with it, diagnosing it, working on it. The price of a new board from them, that has been easily another $500 bill, if not much. I've heard rumors of somebody getting their uh, generator serviced or worked on at Cummins and coming out of there with a 1000 or $1,200 bill. So that, that, that scared me, you know. If... If all went well, I might get out of there for 500 bucks, right? Anyway, it's a little resistor. I'll have to at least take my buddy to lunch for fixing this. He saved me a fortune. So now what? Oh, one more thing that was kind of a freebie. Here what I missed when I looked at this uh, bounder. And, uh, some, the check engine light was on. And I didn't know it because somebody did it so neatly, put a piece of black tape on it must have used an exacto knife and trimmed it it just looked like it was just a little blank spot here the check engine light was on behind it i never seen it when i was putting the exhaust back on i noticed there's an o2 sensor that goes in the side of the wide pipe and the plug was hanging down it wasn't hooked to anything so then i found the other end it was hanging over here when i was putting it all back together i plugged it in the check engine light goes out yet one day that tape started peeling back a little bit I said, hey, there's a light behind there. And I pulled the tape back a little bit and it says check engine. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Uh, so it, so I don't know why it was unplugged. The check engine light is out now. So I pulled the tape off. <laughs> a little bit of tape residue on there. I got to clean that. But the progress has just been, I've been very, very happy <laughs> with everything coming together. Um that's it. That's the update on the bounder. Uh, bye bye bye. Bye bye. Come on. Come here. Come on. Come on. Better come. Come here. All right. I'm gonna say hi. Come on. Hi. Come on. Come on. Up. 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 Hi. Hi. Okay. So there's Bella. Okay. <laughs> gotta sneak. Gotta squeeze her in the video somehow. Ah. Ah. So yeah, we's out riding around and. So quiet. Yeah, summer's coming up. And I really need that generator to, as a backup. You know, with some of them crazy hot days here and there. And it'd just be nice to run the, uh, be able to run the air conditioner if I need to. And it's all part of the, you know, it's all part of the, just having the thing working like it should work. Period. So, it'll be much more enjoyable to use as an RV when it's fully functional and someday comes time to sell it I'll get a better price out of it if it's really you know doesn't have that list of issues going on that it's it's really in good shape and fully functional so I guess that's the end of the update uh, what else I don't know I guess that's it we'll be back on a road going somewhere very soon actually like comment share subscribe thanks for watching i'll see you next time <laughs>